holy shnikes there's a lot of video game news that we have to cover we're not even going to do an intro for it we're just going to jump right in so sit back relax make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's talk about all the crazy things happening in the world of video games so first off, let's talk about something that happened yesterday that has a lot of ramifications, a lot of people talking, and a lot of speculation. One thing that a lot of people were looking forward to, myself included, was of course Sony returning to E3 2020. It just kind of made sense. You have a brand new console coming out with the PlayStation 5 releasing this holiday season. So many people, myself included, thought that Sony would more than likely be at E3 2020 in order to showcase this system. Of course, E3 is a big, massive event yes they did skip last year but that sort of made sense the ps4 was winding down they did not have much things to show off for the ps4 and they were not ready to talk about the ps5 but yesterday we learned that once again sony isn't going to be at e3 this year and now a lot of people think there's a lot of ramifications from this and obviously e3 is definitely shifting so basically, in an exclusive with GameIndustry.biz, Sony said the following about attending E3 2020. After thorough evaluation, Sony Interactive Entertainment has decided to not participate in E3 2020, said a Sony Interactive Entertainment spokesperson. We have a great respect for the ESA as an organization, but we do not feel the vision of E3 2020 is the right venue for what we are focused on this year. They also went on to say things like they're basically going to do a tour of the PlayStation 5 all across the country with various events held for the PlayStation brand to sort of bring awareness to these systems that are coming out for the PlayStation brand and of course the games coming out for the PlayStation 5. Obviously that shows a massive shift and change in how Sony perceives E3 and how a lot of companies probably perceive E3. E3 unfortunately is sort of on the way out. Things like Nintendo Direct, Sony State of Play events, and inside Xbox events have kind of made E3 a moot point. These companies can control when they want to talk about products they can control when they want to talk about games and they don't have to rely on the big stage of e3 i still think e3 is somewhat important i think it does hold some sort of semblance in the video game industry but i'm an old school person i remember back in 2004 buying dvds for e3 2004 so you could learn about what's coming out what's happening in the video game industry but obviously the rise of the internet has sort of thwarted the need for e3 i think e3 is eventually going to have to shift into more of a fan expo and hope that companies want to come to the big stage in order to talk about their things but it's definitely going to be a very interesting time a lot of people are expecting some big playstation 5 announcements to happen in february of this year next month to learn about the system potentially the price point and the games for it but i'm all for it it is a shame to see e3 sort of dying out but it is what it is the video game industry is shifting and sony seems to be going in a different direction than e3 Next up, it looks like a compilation is coming to the Nintendo Switch that I don't think many people expected, and that is a Bioshock compilation. Now, Bioshock, of course, has received three games in the franchise, and none of these games have appeared on a Nintendo system. I remember playing the original Bioshock on the Xbox 360, and I really enjoyed that game. I did sort of figure out the big plot twist before the plot twist happened, and that kind of made me a little bit upset. But of course, all of the Bioshock games are very highly rated and games that people really enjoy, but it looks like a Bioshock Collection is now coming to the Nintendo Switch consisting of those three games. So basically the Digital Game Rating Committee of Taiwan posted a listing for Bioshock the Collection on the Nintendo Switch and this collection will include the following Bioshock Remastered, Bioshock 2 Remastered, and Bioshock Infinite the Complete Edition. They did also list these games separately so it looks like you'll be able to pick these games up individually or in this complete compilation as well depending on if you want to play all three of the games and own all three of the games or if you just want them individually. Now I do think it's kind of interesting the timing of this. Obviously a lot of people, myself included, are expecting a January Nintendo Direct. So for this to sort of leak out before that, that definitely feels like a direct announcement that a Bioshock collection is coming to the Nintendo Switch. I'm definitely happy to see that they're the remastered editions of these games that released on the PS4 and the Xbox One. So if you haven't checked out these games, this will probably be a very solid way to do so. I am interested to see the pricing though. I hope they don't go the $60 route and $20 for each individual game or even worse $30 like Capcom tends to do with their old releases but even so these are great games these are definitely very high pedigree games so I'm interested to see how the Nintendo Switch version of these games end up being and when these games are announced I definitely think a Nintendo Direct is on the horizon and this seems like something that would be announced during it 
Next up, one of the biggest games for March is now delayed a little bit. It won't be coming out until April 17th, and that is the Final Fantasy VII Remake, a game that a lot of people are really looking forward to playing, but now they're going to have to wait a little bit longer. And this sort of shows something that's happening in the video game industry that we're starting to see more and more. But first, let's get into the announcement that was made by Square Enix as to why there is a slight delay for this game. So the producer of Final Fantasy VII Remake, Yoshinoro Kitatsi, which I probably said wrong, had to say the following about the Final Fantasy VII Remake. We know that many of you are looking forward to the release of Final Fantasy VII Remake and have been waiting patiently to experience what we have been working on. In order to ensure we deliver a game that is in line with our vision and the quality that our fans have been waiting for deserve, we have decided to move the release date to April 10th of 2020. We are making this tough decision in order to give ourselves a few extra weeks to apply final polish to the game and to deliver you with the best possible experience. I, on behalf of the whole team, want to apologize to everyone as I know this means waiting for the game just a little bit longer. Thank you for your patience and continued support. Now really the more interesting story to me, more so than the delay itself, is how many times with these big AAA games lately, we've been seeing these subsequent delays that are happening. We of course saw it with Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal was supposed to be a late 2019 release and then was pushed to March of 2020. The Last of Us 2, once again, that was a game that got a concrete release date and then was delayed for a little bit longer on the PlayStation 4. And now you're starting to see it with the Final Fantasy 7 remake. And I'm kind of wondering why this is happening all of a sudden. It's seems to be happening more and more frequently with these big AAA games. Are companies maybe talking about these games a little bit too soon and giving out these release dates before the games are actually ready to go in order to maybe sort of drum up interest? Obviously, if you're going for a dedicated release date, but then you delay it, people are going to continually talk about these games. And I'm not saying that this is necessarily a marketing strategy for some of these companies, but there's definitely something going on with this, and I don't really know what it is. It could be just as innocent as it looks on the surface. These games are not ready to come out yet, so companies are taking their extra time to polish these games. But I really think there might be a deeper story with this. I'm not quite sure. Let me know in the comments section down below what you think of this delay. Obviously, it's not a huge deal. It's just a couple weeks. But it's definitely interesting to see this happening more and more in the video game industry with these big AAA releases. And finally, we already had a Pokemon Direct in the month of January to learn about the DLC expansion passes for Pokemon Sword and Shield. Some people liked it, some people didn't, and now we're having another Direct, but it's still not the standard Nintendo Direct. I think the standard Direct is still coming in the month of January, but now we're getting a Smash Brothers Direct on the 16th, which is happening, of course, in just a few days. And what is going to be at this Smash Brothers Direct? Well, we're going to learn about the final character for the game, and a little press release went out saying the following. Join Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Director Masahiro Sakurai on January 16th at 6 a.m. Pacific Time for a roughly 35-minute live stream featuring an in-depth look at our upcoming DLC fighter, which he will unveil in the video. So obviously we're going to learn about the fifth and final season one DLC character for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And there's been so many theories out there, but my theory that I did last week kind of looks like it has a little bit more steam now. If you did not watch that video, I highly recommend you do to get all the sort of nitty gritty details about why this makes sense. But this is definitely a pillar that I was expecting to happen if this character leak was indeed real. And that character is of course, Dante from Devil May Cry. Now a lot of this is stemming from when a member of the Devil May Cry 3 team uploaded a video onto the Devil May Cry and the Capcom Twitter page, basically saying that there was going to be a lot of information about Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition for the Nintendo Switch. And the first nugget of information would be unveiled on January 16th. And so I thought to myself, with these three timelines that they sort of made for this game, wouldn't it sort of make sense for Devil May Cry representation to be in Smash Brothers? Because obviously we're going to be learning about Smash Brothers in the month of January. And now that we're getting a Smash Brothers Direct on when? January 16th. I definitely think that Dante could in fact be the final character that is in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate for the Season 1 DLC pack. I'm definitely not saying that I have any inside information on this. I really just sort of connected the dots in previous things that were said about Dante and Smash. So it could be Dante. It could be someone completely different. You never really know what to expect with Sakurai, but I'm definitely looking forward to this presentation. I think all of the DLC characters 
characters for Smash Brothers up until this point have been very interesting and very unique when it comes to these different characters. So is it going to be Dante? Isn't it going to be Dante? I hope it is just so I look really smart. But yes, we will find out the final Smash Brothers character on Thursday, and I know a lot of people are looking forward to it. Woo! So that was a lot of video game information to digest. Sony is skipping E3, Bioshock looks like it's coming to the Switch, Final Fantasy VII is delayed, and yes, Smash Brothers is getting the final character unveiled this Thursday, and more than likely, hopefully it is Dante. So let me know in the comments section down below what you think of all this. Make sure you guys go check out my Dante speculation video as well to sort of see how I came to this conclusion about Dante potentially being the final Smash Brothers character. Also, make sure you check out the video from yesterday. There is a a huge sale going on in the Nintendo Switch eShop right now. Over 800 games. I give you guys some of my recommendations on the best games to pick up at the best available prices. Oh yeah, and by the way, Mitch, I kind of bet that Sony was going to be at E3 2020 on the Spawn cast, so I, I might have to eat you this weekend. Wait, what the fuck? And as always, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel, slap that like button, and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.